1 Samuel chapter 20. And David fled from Naoth, taken off chapter 19, and Ramoth, and came and said before Jonathan. Now he runs into Jonathan. He knows Jonathan is on his side, not his father's side. What have I done? What is my iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father? Now David's saying, listen, I'm a sinner. I've sinned. But what on earth have I done to Saul? That he's chasing me. He wants me dead. That he seeketh my life. And on all points, Jesus Christ without sin. But before Saul, David has no charges. And he said unto him, God forbid, Jonathan speaking, thou shalt not die. Jonathan's a prophet. Now when Jonathan says thou shalt not die, I mean David dies, but he's talking about in the hands of my dad. And it's funny because Saul over here prophesied. He says, as the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And then Jonathan says thou shalt not die. Saul's not going to kill you. You're not going to die in the hands of Saul. Now you're going to die. Nat David dies natural causes, old age. Later on, Saul's going to say, "Listen, I I'm done with you." And then David runs off to, uh, I believe, Moab. But Saul is giving him a run for the money, and we're not done yet. Behold, my father will do nothing either great or small, but that he will show it me. And why should my father hide this thing from me if it's not so? I'm just going to ask my father, what's the trouble? What's the problem? And he's going to hide nothing from me. And David swear moreover and said, thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thy eyes. Jonathan, your father is not too happy with you. I'm his enemy, and you and I are buddies, friendship. And he says, let not Jonathan know this. Because whatever Jonathan knows, he's going to go tell David, my enemy. At least he be grieved. I don't want to set Jonathan. I don't want to make Jonathan upset because him and David are friends. But truly as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step, first time that word shows up, and the next time, the only time is Job 31, 7. So there's only two steps in the Bible. No, 14-step program. No. It says, but a step between me and death. What's David saying there? I got one foot in the grave. <laughs> With your father. So he didn't listen to Jonathan say, Thou shalt not die. In the hands of Saul, I'm going to die. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon. The Jews go by the lunar calendar, not by the sun, but by the moon. This would be the first month. The new moon began the first day of the month. We'll look at them in a moment, a couple places. I shall not fail to sit with the king at me. So at the king's table, there is a spot reserved for David. But let me go that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at even. Now, this little side note here, Genesis 3.10. Genesis 3.10. He said, let me hide myself. Man's been doing this. Now, David was innocent in the eyes of Saul. In Genesis 3.10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid... Because I was naked and I hid myself. David's afraid. 
He does not know, or the intention of Saul is to kill him. He has no idea knowing why. So he hides. He says, let me hide for three days. The first, second, and third day of the month. So, and if thy father at all miss me, when, when you're at that table of your father, and my seat is empty, for the first day, for the second day, for the third day. Then say, David earnestly asked, leave of me, that he may run to Bethlehem, the city, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. Now, let's look at Leviticus 23, 24 real quick. And I'm going to make an assumption here, and I may be wrong. But Levit Leviticus 23, 24 Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. This may be, and it's been supposed, that this is the Feast of Tabernacles. This time. Can't be proven. But if David's not lying, Jonathan, this is the Feast of Tabernacles. Let me go home to my family. Let me go to Bethlehem. You know what's interesting about that? If it's the Feast of Tabernacles in Bethlehem, and if this is correct, do you know what possibly what day Jesus Christ was born on? The Feast of Tabernacles. The seventh month. The first day. It's quite interesting. If this is the Feast of Tabernacles. And I got 16, 2 and 3. Let's see. 16, 2 and 3. I don't know. Let's see what we got here. In 16, 2 and 3, and Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with thee, and I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him in whom I name unto thee. So Bethlehem has been a place of sacrifice. And we don't know if is David lying. Is it, he doesn't go to Bethlehem. We know that part's a lie. And if he say thus, it is well. If Saul says it is well, thy servant shall have peace. All right, he's not here. He's going to see his family. Okay. It's that time of the year or whatever, you know, let him go. Don't bother me. But if he be very wrong, then be sure that evil's determined, first time that word shows up, by him. And Saul's not only angry, but he is wrathful that I am not there in that seat. Then we are troubled. Because what would make Saul be so angry that David's not there? He's gone with his family. He's asked permission. He didn't ask Saul, but. Therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant. For thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be in me iniquity. Okay. Jonathan, you and I are going to make a covenant. We are standing before the Lord right now. We're making an oath. I am going to trust my life with you right now. Because you can come back and deliver me into Saul. And I won't even know it. You can come back and say, hey, yeah, my father, he's not upset. Everything's wonderful. Come on back. And then Saul takes a javelin and stabs him to death. Do you see why the love between Jonathan and David are so wonderful? David is putting his life in Jonathan. Jonathan is the son of, of Saul. He has to Saul not only the honor of the father, but the honor that Saul is the king. 
And now we're going to play out. Listen, if this happens, this is the outcome. If this is happening, this will be the outcome. And I'm going to trust you, Jonathan, that you're going to tell me the truth, even though I'm setting a lie before you. And David says, slay me thyself. If I have sinned, if I am under the penalty of capital punishment, of anything I've done wrong, then I want you to kill me right now. And bring my head, bring my body to your father. Acts 23, 11. Acts 23, 11. Now another saw, let's say it. First Samuel, Saul didn't say it, David said it. Is <clears> that 25 over? My writing is terrible. 2511, not 23, excuse me. 2511. Acts 2511. David says, Jonathan, if I'm guilty, kill me. This is Paul. And if I be offender, that's what David said, or have committed anything worthy of death, that's what David said, I refuse not to die. There you go. That's New Testament. We're in the Old Testament. So what do you get today? Somebody who's done a vicious crime, worthy of capital punishment. They trust Christ as their Savior. Oh, boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, you're about to kill me. Paul says, listen, if I'm guilty, pull that switch, inject that stuff, pull the trigger, put my head in the noose. I refuse not to die. David says, as far as capital punishment, Jonathan, if I'm guilty, I refuse not to die. That's Old Testament and that's New Testament. What are you going to do? All right, yes, you're saved. You're, you're born again. Your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's good and glory to God the Father. The sins are under the blood, but you owe justice to mankind. Now, you may apologize for the damage you've done to the family, but still, why should thou bring me to thy father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee. For if I knew certainly that evil were determined by my father to come upon thee, then would not I tell it. Jonathan doesn't know. Jonathan, he knows, but he doesn't know. And I don't know if it's because he doesn't want to believe it so. I don't know what kind of thing he has to his dad, but... David, you can't be really serious about what my dad. And yet Jonathan's warned him about his father. And the last time we left him in chapter 19, Saul says, listen, all right, I swear to God, thou shalt not be slain. And then the evil spirit comes and he throws that javelin at David and David's off on the run and we don't know if Jonathan knew what happened. He may have heard rumors. Then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me? Or what if thy father answers thee roughly? Okay, how am I going to know? And Jonathan said unto David, Come, and let us go out into the field. And they went both out of them into the field. Now here they are, they're in a field. And they're going to do talking more. I don't know where they were before. Now they go out in the field. And Jonathan said to David, Now watch this. Jonathan said to David, O Lord God of Israel. David is not O Lord God of Israel. What is Jonathan doing? He's got David right there. He's talking to him. And Jonathan, while speaking to David, breaks out in prayer. He's not addressing David as, oh, Lord God of Israel. He's looking at David and he prays, oh, Lord God of Israel. When I have sounded to find out, to know, my father, about tomorrow, any time, or the third day, may take three days, and behold, if there be good toward David, if my father's not as bad as we think he is, 
And I then send not unto thee, and show it thee. So Jonathan is assuring David by praying to God. And the Lord do so and much more to Jonathan. Now look at that, that's third person. He's in prayer to God and he speaks third person. But if it please my father to do thee evil. Verse 12, if his father does good. Verse 13, if he's going to do evil. Then I will show it thee. I'm going to show you if he does it good. Or I'm going to show you if he wants evil. I'm going to let you know, David. Praying to God. And send thee away. All right, my father is evil against you. I'm going to let you go. And thou mayest go in peace. Running. On the run. But God's with David. And the Lord be with thee. The peace. As he's been with my father. Now departed from his father. And thou shalt not only while yet I live show me the kindness of the Lord that I die not. All right, David, if I don't give you the answer, yea or nay, then let God kill me. But also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. All right, for this what I'm doing for you, David, David, I want you to make a covenant as I just made a covenant. I'm going to make a covenant with the Lord. I will protect you with whatever my father does. Now I want you to make a covenant with my house, my children. I want you to protect my family. Forever. No, not when the Lord has cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David that day. They're, they're making it right. They're making a plea. They're making a deal with each other. They're setting for. And that's why David will call. Uh, I forget what his name is. But Jonathan's son and take care of him because of this pact. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even requite it at the hand of David's enemy. And this pact will go after Jonathan dies. David will take care of Jonathan's son forever. Because of this pact that they made. This will be settled. So David takes care of Jonathan's son. There is love between these two. They're family. Now David's going to have the opportunity to hang Saul's sons. But he won't hang Mephibosheth. I think that's Jonathan's name. His son. And Jonathan caused David to swear again. We're going to make this final and sure. Because he loved him. For he loved him as he loved his own soul. Again, the sodomites will misuse that. Jonathan is caught between two. The honor of his father and the king of the nation and David, his servant, who's done nothing wrong. And Jonathan has that love, that military love, that great bondship with David that who could really hate David as much as my father? So Jonathan caused David to swear again because he loved him. For he loved him as he loved his own soul. And Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed. First time that word shows up. Because thy seat will be empty. There's David's chair over there. That's a great preacher. And when he looks over at the table and he's eating his meal, he looks up and over there, there's an empty seat. That's his buddy. That's his friend. That's the one who he cares about. That's David. He's not there. And Jonathan's the only one that knows. David's out there in a the field somewhere hiding. 
He's fast and bobbling. And if it rains, he's going to get wet. He's going to sleep under the clouds, under the sky, under the stars. I'm in the house, having a good meal. And when thou hast stayed three days, then shall show go down quickly, and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand, and shall remain by the stone as thou. All right, this is what, okay, now this is, this is after the three days. This is how I'm going to answer you, David. I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. I'm going to take my bow and arrow, I'm going to shoot, like I'm aiming at a, at the target. Bang, 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 bang. And behold, I will send a lad. So there's going to be two of them. Jonathan and the young man. Saying, go. And out the arrows. Find out the arrows. Go find out there. Go get my arrows. If I expressly, first time that word shows up, say unto the lad. All right, here we go. Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee. All right, young man, they're on this side of you. With David that's listening, they're on this side of you. Take them. Talking to the young man. Then come thou, David, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt as the Lord liveth. All right, they're right near there. All right, David, you can come out. Things are well. But if I say thus unto the young man, lad is a young man, a lad is a young man, and a young man is lad. Behold, the arrows are beyond thee. They're way over there. Go get them. Go thy way, David, for the Lord has sent thee away. If I launch those arrows up and over his head beyond him, all right, there's trouble. Go. If I say they're near you, right there, right near, right by you, come. And this young man's going to know nothing. And as touching the matter which thou and I have spoken of, the covenant, behold, the Lord be between thee and me forever. Now, about this first day of week before we do 24. Let's see Numbers 10.10. 10. Let's see what, what's happening. Now, we can sure this one. Numbers 10.10, 10, the first day of the month. Numbers 10.10. 10. I hope it's the right chapter here. Yeah, it is. Numbers 10.10. 10. Let's see what the atmosphere is supposed to be for the Jews. Alas, in the day of yours gladness first time that word shows up in your solemn days in the beginnings the first time that word shows up of your months the first day of the months the new moon ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offering and over your the sacrifices of your peace offering that you may be to you for a memorial before the your god i am the lord your god it's supposed to be a time of feasting, a time of rejoicing. God, we're in a brand new month here, a brand new start. The offerings blow the trumpets. It's supposed to be exciting. And on the first of the month, while the first day is going, while the sacrifices and the trumpets are being blown, David's hiding somewhere. While Jonathan's sitting in the room with the king and having a meal. And this could be maybe the meal that, that the king is having for that time of the year. We don't know if he's there the other days of the month. But the first day of the moon when it's supposed to be a celebration, David is out on his own. He's in the woods. So David hid himself in the field. And when the new moon was come, it's a feasting and gladness. The king sat down to eat meat. And we're going to stop right there. We're going to break this chapter because we don't want to mess with part two of this. This chapter is two parts. David and, and Jonathan together talking about their plans 
and the rest of the chapter is what happens after their plans. And we'll just stop there. We don't feel rushed. Learn the scriptures.